Hi hey guys, uh, this is about triax versus relays and why we use them. Um, the symbol for the triac on a schematic is going to be on the right there. Uh, G is, stands for gate and you're going to have an implied ground on MT1 and uh, MT2 is going to be L1. Uh, now MT1 is also going to be the neutral for your AC mains. So there's actually four connections there. I'm going to show you in a diagram here. All right, this is from a Frigidaire Iceman refrigerator, the one with the uh, board underneath with the uh, flex tray. And you can see up the top left, you have a couple of triax um, line and then the triac, and then it goes to a load and then neutral. So you can see how it's use, uh, getting uh, AC mains. And the gate is that little uh, flag up top. And this is a circuit I drew up as a representation of a triac, so it's just a little more understandable. Uh, you can see the do, uh, two diodes in parallel up at the top and the micro on the right hand side will switch uh, DC voltage. You can actually have either positive or negative DC voltage to switch the triac. And uh, the diodes allow current uh, that is either positive or negative to flow through so it's really good for switching AC loads. Um, also the Track is quiet on a relay. You have that that audible switch sound, and uh, that can be a pain for technicians when they're trying to hear if the relay is clicking or not. But uh, for the customer, it's going to make their appliance quieter. You notice how the microprocessor DC ground is connected to the neutral AC line, and that is uh, one of the things that's a little different about a triac. Uh, versus, uh, let's say, your relay that's only going to have the primary side and the secondary side. They're going to be completely um, independent of each other, or isolated from each other. And on a triac, they're not. Triac actually stands for triode AC switch. And um, the load can be either a DC or an AC load, um, but typically triacs are used in AC situations. All right, so this is the Iceman board we were talking about. And this right here, these two wires, uh, I soldered in to this triac right here. And these two wires over here, I soldered into this relay over here. And so I got the mains coming in here, right here, and right here. That's for the um, relay. And then when I switch to the triac, uh, I'm going to switch that to here. Um, to enable the uh, the light because obviously they're not on the same uh, circuit. So uh, first I'm going to uh, try out the uh, the relay and then we'll uh, do the triac and we'll, we'll see how they differ. All right, so I'm going to give it 12 volts for my power supply. This, this is the power supply I'm going to be using and I'm going to measure the current using my bench meter. So let's go ahead and give it 12 volts here. There we go. So we've got, as you can see, I turned the power on my DC power supply. Now, as you notice, we got about 30 milliamps um, at 12 volts. Um, and that's for, again, the relay. Now, let's go ahead and try the triac. Okay, I've got the triac set up here. I'm going to switch on my power supply. Okay. Now, as you can see, on our current meter... I'm able to run that at about four milliamps, even less. It'll get down to two, and it'll still keep that light on. And uh, you can see we're running at 0.7 volts. Now, what that tells me is that uh, there are pros and cons to both relays and triacs. Um, with the relay, you're going to have that isolation between um, the DC power and the AC power on your board. Um, but with the triac, you can run them at very low currents. And that means that uh, you're going to save a lot of energy. And, you know, with appliances, with the energy store compliant, all, compliance and all that, uh, they really need to um, meet those requirements. So triacs are going to really help with that. And uh, so that's uh, pretty much what I got for you. If you have any questions, uh, you know, put them in the comments back down low. All right. Bye.